Hello, everybody. Welcome to Karma Hub. Chris Plord from California is talking with us today about breath work and so many of its benefits. And it also has therapeutic parallels with plant medicine, which I found pretty fascinating. Chris has even taught breath work to the military special ops because specific breath work exercises can drastically reduce highly stressful, highly triggered, trauma-filled situations. Many executives and CEO do this work as well to stay calm and focused during the high pressures of corporate life. This stuff really works for many people. So consider adding this to your practice to amplify your personal and professional fulfillment. I hope you enjoy this interview. Thank you so much. Oh, and um, click that like button and the, the subscribe button if you could. Take care. Thank you. Breath work is, is an, an insight and plant medicine. It's, it's an insight to what your life should be. The, the most important part of doing this work and getting these insights and having these feelings is the integration of it, you, right? We can spend all day, we can go on a uh, a, a two day silent, three day silent retreat. We can do a weekend and do ayahuasca. We can spend a retreat doing a breath work five times a, a weekend, whatever the case may be. But unless we're implementing this into our lives, right, and using it and getting into action, massive action, then there's no changes that are going to happen, right. right? We can be inspired all we want, but how do we take this and now move it into? Uh, our lives to have that guide, coach, facilitator, shaman, whatever the case may be, that's vital, right? Because if if you go through something like breathwork could trigger traumas, breathwork could trigger you know old, uh, experiences. They could it could bring in you know people from ancestors from your past. You might just have a, a physical experience that you have no idea how to put into words, right? So it's really important, no matter what you're doing, to have that person to kind of guide you through it, to kind of hold you and say, okay. And that, that this person, whoever it's going to be, is going to bring you into um, that integration process. Right? The compassion, the sage, the innovator, the um, uh, getting into to, to creativity, more creativity, all of those things is where most of us want to operate from. And studies show if we can operate from there, not only are you going to, you know, if you're in business, you're going to make 30% more, you're going to live 10 years longer, you're going to be exponentially happier. And that's the whole point of doing this work is to come from that state of your brain, right? As opposed to living, which most people do in their left brain, where that is judgment, survival, anxiety, anger, fear, blah, blah, controller, all that other stuff that, that we were taught as kids. So Chris, you started on this journey with uh, fitness and you got deeper and deeper into guiding and assisting people on this wellness path. These days, it, it now seems like you are now a coach of, of all areas of life and you, you do a lot of breath work in your practice. And that's a good bit of mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about today because I'm, I'm very, I'm fascinated by that modality. It, it seems to be very right. helpful for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. You have group classes, workshops and, and retreats. So you're where are you located? Los Angeles. Okay. And, mm -hmm. but you do, you do a fair amount of work remotely, I guess, through, through zoom. So you don't have to actually live in Los Angeles to be able to benefit from your services. Is that right? No, nope. no, nope, for sure. You know, I um, have it on my website. If, if people are looking to look for themselves or their companies, organizations, they can always set up a discovery call just to kind of see if, if we're a match for each other. Love it. Yeah. So the big question is, how did you get into this arena? Why breath work? Um, why are you going down this path? So when I, when I first took breath work, um, I was teaching in Santa Monica at a meditation studio, just regular guided meditation, and they offered breath work. And so I took the class and the very first thing I got off the floor and I said, I have to teach this. And that was the first words out of my mouth. The reason I said that is because my connection to myself, my lightness, the, the, 
the layers were able to get peeled off. The mask was off. My, my, uh, my nervous system was stable. I felt lighter. I felt just more connected to what was around me, but more importantly, you know, just as importantly to myself. And so I got to a point where it was like, I need to, this feeling is something that is just beautiful. I mean, just completely amazing. This is where I need to be and live all the time. So that's when I said, I'm going to share this with as many people as I can share it with. And so I embarked on my year long certification to get certified as a breathwork instructor through my teacher, David Elliott. And that's how, that's how it began. So So I listened to one of your other interviews and I, I believe you said something along the lines that it has a similar effect or similar, maybe similar benefits as maybe uh, plant, plant medicine. Oh yes. And so I've been doing plant, my wife and I, and you know, our whole community have been doing plant medicines for years. Um, and that was my first introduction into that deep connection, you know, something I think I've always looked for growing up a Catholic and, you know, having this, <laughs> these rituals and what church was. And, you know, through that, I never really just went, Oh, I, I feel that connection. You know, there was that belief, that faith, um, the teachings that went along with it. It wasn't like I uh, opposed it or anything, but when I first took plant medicine, I was like, wow, this is, this is something it's trippy. magical. It's, <laughs> it's trippy. It's, 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 you know, all those things I described, I just described in breath work, I got through using plant medicine. And, and not only that, the reason I, I, I did it was how can I be a better uh, partner? How can I be a better man, a better father? A, a, the, all, the medicine has an intelligence to it that just allows you to see things in a way that you never saw things before. It allows us to heal parts of us and see those energy lines and connections to two different things within us and in our lives that, a lot, that, that gives us this new insight. And, you know, I can tell hundreds and hundreds of stories, not only for me, but for my clients and uh, different people that are, or to our community that has been through these, these, these journeys, so to speak. And so when I took breath work years later, after starting plant medicine, the breath work allowed me to connect in a way, almost the same way as I do with plant medicine. And that was one of wow. the main reasons why I was like, wow, Okay. That's, that's I have fantastic. to learn this as well. So now we're utilizing the breath work prior to the plant medicine journeys, um, which is, which is really, really special as well. So, yeah, it is very interesting. Cause uh, I mean, you know, I'm here in Maryland in Baltimore and Hopkins is a hop, skip and a jump away from me. And Hopkins oh, sure. actually has been for years now conducting uh, different yep. studies around um, uh, psilocybin. So plant medicine mm-hmm. and yeah. um yeah, so that that's it's been interesting seeing how that whole topic has been evolving. Right, um, they're they're using that that you know a, a primarily for PTSD, depression. Um, their their studies are just vast on the effects of people that, and what yes. they get. You know, some some people up to seventy percent of the people plus. I don't know the exact stat, but it's somewhere along those lines are reporting it to be one of the most profound experiences of their life in using right. this plant medicine. So, and actually what they have to use within the government is a synthetic version of the psilocybin. So they're used because it has to be measured in a certain way. So they can't use the authentic plant. They use a, a synthetic version, which actually does very similar effects to uh, same effects as what the actual plant medicine is the organic stuff. Yeah. So what are your thoughts so, around that? Not to get too far off, off base, because I know this is an example no. we uh, um, had planned to talk about, but um, mm-hmm. you said that uh, plant medicine has a intelligence, uh, you know, around it or, or, mm-hmm. or, or with it, you know, um, when, you, when a synthetic based composition is put together, do you think that affects the intelligence at all? You said it has a, great a, a very, a very it's, similar effect. It's a great, great question. Um, there's a, there's what it does to the body. I won't get into specifics is it, it, it kind of neutralizes and allows 
um, your, your pineal gland and this DMT to get released. And that's what the plant does, whether it's psilocybin, ayahuasca, uh, 5-MeO, DMT, you know, all of these things that, that allow us to really connect to the layers within ourselves. So if, um, the other thing is, um, um, not to uh, sassafras or, um, MDMA, which they're using in a lot of studies too. So a lot of these compounds are allowing us to get within ourselves. Um, the synthetic version does the same thing and can give really amazing messages. Um, it's just a matter of what you choose, right? My personal opinion, I like the organic, organic version, the, the actual plant, just because it's from the earth. You know, my wife's, a, right. uh, uh, you know, she works with plants and, and, and she does all works with the medicines and the tinctures and all this other stuff. So I just like the organic version again, for yeah. some, and especially in these studies, if that's your only way in, then go with that. If, if you think it's really going to, if you're getting called to it and you think it's going to benefit you. So that makes sense. So mm -hmm. uh, back to breath work, how, mm -hmm. the, how is breath work? How does it get you to the point where you say it's, it's reminiscent of plant medicine? Mm -hmm. So what the breathing does, they say the issues are in the tissues, right? So when you're deeply breathing, you're allowing the oxygen to overload the CO2 to overload your body. It's coming in, you're letting in, um, people are feeling a very physical effect. So for instance, you know, some P I had a girl last night that was really feeling it in the back of her neck and shoulders where she holds a lot of her stress and tension. So when that gets released, a lot of this tension that's in the body, a lot that gets released. And what is happening is these emotions that are within, within this. I don't know if anybody has ever felt like a massage before and, and the masseuse has touched upon a certain area of your body and you just feel like crying, right? Or there's an emotion that comes out or you're just like, what was that? And, 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 and sometimes the masseuse is very well versed in how to facilitate and work with that. And sometimes it's just the physical experience. Well, I'm not saying it's exactly like massage, but there, as you're breathing and as you're going through the resistance and peeling back the layers, these emotions can get released. And as the emotions get released, you might feel them. You might know exactly what they are. You might have an experience that's very mystical. You might have a very physical experience, but allows you to connect to the deeper part of yourself. And again, I can't dictate what you're going to feel or how you're going to feel it because everybody has a different experience every single time. But the part of releasing and letting go and getting into that right brain or, or heart space of yourself, as opposed to the survival, I'm going to control and judge all of this really allows you to kind of find that, that love and that, that, that beauty that's within you. That's always been there. And, um, yeah, that's, that's just the, the simple <laughs> version of it, but I think you got to experience it to, to really, really feel what it is before you judge it. Yeah. I mean, so. what, is it a particular type of breathing that gets you there? Is it because there's a lot yeah. of um, CO2 built up um, in mm -hmm. the body that, so you're. That's um, part of it. Yeah, that's part. I mean, and then there could be too much CO2 where the hands get very tight. If you want to talk about the physical, you know, there could be cramping. So we might have to release. So there's a, there's a balance aspect to it without getting too scientific. So I actually want to I hit think, on that for a second, because, mm -hmm. you know, I've done a little bit of breath work. Um, I, I don't mm -hmm. know for certain that it's something that has totally resonated with me. I have gotten some interesting, um, interesting things have, have happened, but I think the most mm -hmm. profound thing that I, I thought was very very unusual is my hands it started feeling like pins and needles and it was really really intense like a like a huge amount of energy was just passing through them or around them what what is that called i know there's a term for it and i i keep on misplacing the name of it right right it's actually called tetany tetany right tetany yes i keep on wanting so, to call it tinnitus and i know that's yeah, not right <laughs> yeah so i i tell people in two different two different versions, right? Okay. So if you want to go scientific version, it could be an overload of CO, an overload of CO2 that causes uh, the blood not to get to the extremity. So it could happen fingers, toes, 
mouth jaw where it cramps or you even get something called claw like uh your hands go into like a claw type of thing so there's there's that right and if you want to stay in that version what i have people do is sometimes just exhale a little bit slower as opposed to (laughs) right it's a little just slow it down a little bit and that could subside now Then there's the energetic form, which some people truly believe in. And, you know, usually when that happens to people and they're like, you know, kind of freaked out about, I ask them what they, what they do for a living. And a lot of people might work with their hands. They might actually be estheticians, masseuses, carpenters. They might work, they might be writers, for example. So a lot of that energy that we have stored could potentially, potentially be in their, their forearms, their hands, you know, that might be causing some sort of block, right? The whole idea is to get the body and and the energetic stream moving through you in this just beautiful way, right? Like if you think about what chi is, right? What Reiki is, what um, uh, the aligning the chakras, if anybody has done Kundalini yoga before and had felt that with everything aligned in this lightness and amazing energy running through them, that's the whole point is it's a, it's a breathwork practice. And the practice means keep showing up for yourself so that we can release what is not serving you any longer, right? That's, that's the whole point is think about and feel into where do you hold stuckness? Where do you hold tension within your body, right? Why is that tension there? And how can we use the breath to facilitate that being released so that we can connect to the deepest parts of ourselves, right? I believe that we're all born here, you know, a soul with a purpose. We all came in to face our own individual karma, right? And, And people in situations keep showing up over and over in our lives to teach us, to show us. Now, are we willing to look at those or are we victimized by them? Are we keep saying, well, if this wasn't here, then I'd be in this place. If that wasn't here, then I'd be here. If I didn't have this childhood or I know you worked with Tony, you know, what he always says is, you know, what life happened for me? How can I reframe that? Right. And say, what are the lessons? How can I own my emotions as opposed to try to push them down, which is where a lot of the physical stuckness comes from and start to feel the feels so that I can really connect on an instinctual level, feel in my heart, use my gut instinct to, to live the life that I'm supposed to live. And again, this is just one tool that allows us to kind of access that. Wow. So you've been doing this for how long now? Uh, coaching or breath work? Uh, breath work specifically, yeah. Oh, breath work, I'd say about five or six years. Gotcha. Plant medicine, had... eight or nine, and then coaching 20 plus. So, wow, good yeah. for you. Good for you. Yeah. So, evidently, this is this breath work, it, it's so effective that um, oh, special ops and the Navy SEALs do this as a practice. Is that correct? For sure. For sure. So, they, they started implementing this not too long ago. And uh, I know in Navy SEALs training, um, some of my clients went down there, uh, Kokora camp. I don't know if you know Mark Devine. And he started bringing in um, this to his his training and then Navy SEALs are doing it too. And the whole reason why this is, I think this is brilliant that they're doing this with with these these men and women that are training for these extremely high stressful um, uh, missions, right? That's what they do. Absolutely. Is when, if we had say like a PTSD or trauma, big trauma, little trauma or something that gets triggered within these situations that we're in, we're not going to be reacting from the right place that we need to, not from the Jedi, we'll call it, or the sage-like place in our brains. So what we do, obviously, for training is try to work through those things so that when you get into those high stressful situations, you know, you're able to react and train and, 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 and do the things that you need to do in order to have a successful mission. Now you can look at that in special ops, but look at CEOs, look at executives that are running these million billion dollar companies, right? They're forced to do these high, make these highly stressful decisions every single day and keep the vision of where the company is going on track. So why not implement this into 
your leadership training into your daily routine so that you are connected and following the path that you should be on and, and doing what needs to be done in order to have that not only successful company, but that, that, you know, everyone is, is, is doing what they need to do. They're, they're happy, they're fulfilled They're You know, it's not just about making the money. It's about doing what you need to do in order to live the life you're supposed to live. Mm, so. I think that's so important. I totally agree with you. Um, mm-hmm. So you've been doing this for a little while now. Are there any like stories or experiences that um, maybe you or even um, some of your, your clients, people that you work with have, mm-hmm. you know, any transformations that have uh, occurred during this practice? Oh, sure. Sure. So you're talking specifically breath work, right? So uh, I think so. I, yes. Yeah. I, you know, here's the thing though. Breath work is, is an, an insight and plant medicine. It's, it's an insight to what your life should be, right? We can, you can get lost and I'll just talk, I'll talk all journey space, whether it's that, whether it's meditation, whether it's, I get these hits, I get these ideas. I have these moments of, of clarity of, of downloads of whatever the case may be. So I'll get into some stories in a second, but the, the most important part of doing this work and getting these insights and having these feelings is the integration of it, right? We can spend all day, we can go on a, 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 a two day silent, three day silent retreat. We can do a weekend and do ayahuasca. We can spend a retreat doing a breath work five times a, a weekend, whatever the case may be. But unless we're implementing this into our lives, right? And using it and getting into action, massive action, then there's no changes that are going to happen, right? right? We can be inspired all we want, but how do we take this and now move it into uh, our lives? So I've seen so, a so lot of probably, people in this uh, work. The mm-hmm. integration, this, uh, this translation of your experience probably is what can distinguish between a, a, a college party throwback of, <laughs> you know, plant medicine and maybe a, a, like an adult therapeutic practice of plant medicine right. or, or breath work or meditation or, right. or whatever it might be. Right. And, and that's, that's the whole thing. And, and just to make sure we're being responsible with this is, you know, you can get a hold of these things, you can do them on your own, but to have that guide, coach, facilitator, shaman, whatever the case may be, that's vital, right? Because if, if you go through something like breathwork could trigger traumas, breathwork could trigger, you know, old uh, experiences, they could, it could bring in, you know, people from ancestors from your past, you might just have a, a physical experience that you have no idea how to put into words, right? So it's really important, no matter what you're doing to have that person to kind of guide you through it to kind of hold you and say, okay, and if you don't, if you don't trust that person, if that person is kind of questionable, their energy and their motives and, and, and there's something that then don't do it with that person. It's really important that, that you fully can allow yourself to go where you need to go. And that, that this person, whoever it's going to be, is going to bring you into um, that integration process, right? That's why I tell all of my clients, I don't care who you do it with. If you get a hold of any of this stuff, these are tools, but if they're not used correctly, they're not going to be as effective as they could be. It's a really, really important, responsible thing, especially that we're talking about this and you're going to be reaching a lot of people just to get a hold of it is one thing to actually keep it in the set and setting. That's a whole different other ball game. That's the difference between what you just said and the college party, right? You can get a hold of it yes. and let's go and do this. Oh no, no. <laughs> yeah. that space needs to be to be held with, with, uh, with love and, and affection and, uh, you know, uh, boundaries so that you can, and whoever you're going to do it with can go through what they need to go through and process what they need to process. So. Wow. Well, I, I would like to get into example. maybe some specifics, of, you know, of, mm-hmm. of maybe some people's, uh, uh aha moments. Right. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah. So I have a, a, a client I'm working with now who, you know, she was, she lives in Europe. She's has two kids. She's in the finance industry, husband, you know, going through a lot, knowing, you know, had some stuff that happened to her as a kid and motherhood kind of uh, dealing with her mom, 
you know, really kind of left her at bay, just like really some triggering issues with, with mom issues and, you know, led her to believe, Hey, am I going to be a, a great mom? You know? And so it all started on her, her journey, her, her idea of fulfillment. Right. And when I asked her, how fulfilled are you on a scale of one to 10? And she goes, well, on five. Right. And I go, okay, how much of you personally, all of you, do you think your kids are getting? And she was like, oh, like not much, right? Like right. to have that go and to realize, oh my God, you know, I had this issue with my mom growing up and now I'm trying to do better, but I'm giving, 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 and I'm not allowing my cup to be full, right? So her path after doing breath work and learning meditation and working with a variety of, of, of people and coaches, um, you know, happy to be on her team. I'm not the only one, you know, guiding okay. her, but her whole endeavor became coaching, um, uh, meditation, teaching, uh, breath work, facilitating. And now she's in the middle of transitioning from her corporate job which she's been working at for many, many years to really take an initiative and going, you know what, this is, I need my cup full. I want to work with people that are, that are on the path of, of self-development of healing. And part of that is understanding that I need to heal myself, that I am the example here. Right. And if I'm doing the work on myself, that's showing my daughters that I'm, uh, that that that's okay i'm the example right. as opposed exactly. to just saying what needs to be said so her life completely switched from i'm not fulfilled to doing what she loves to do to slowly transitioning out you know it's not necessarily like i want to change i'm going to just lose my entire income that i just had right uh, that's what i think a lot of people get in the the mindset they're going to do to doing exactly what she wants to do right i literally was just uh, WhatsApping with her. And she was just like, Oh my God, life is this. I got these new clients. I'm doing oh, this. So We're great. ready to switch into a new whole endeavor. I'm spending more time with my girls. I'm taking care of myself. She looks great. She feels great. She's glowing. And it's just, you know, it, and it's taken a good year to, to make this transition, but she's finally in that position where she's fulfilled, happy, and life is working with her. She's not working against it. She's dancing in the resistance as opposed to fighting the resistance like she used to. Wow. Yeah, I'm seeing so many people uh, making that, that switch from mm -hmm. you know, a nine to five job or a corporate job and like shifting into something that they really feel fulfilled doing. Right. And it is tough. Very few people can just like make that switch like that. Like you said, it's usually best if there's a, a transition period that occurs. So I, I feel like this, this breath work is a very, it's, it's an active, um, it's like an active meditation almost. Mm -hmm. I have challenges with regular meditation in that I often find that I um, fall asleep. <laughs> <And Yeah. laughs> I, I know that's poor form. Um, yeah. But I, I'm not sure what it is. But you know, when I when I get into that state, oftentimes I find that I I'm just I just click out. And some people mm -hmm. are like, "Well, you're just going into a very, very deep meditative state." Mm -hmm. So I get multiple different theories. But my feeling is that maybe I shouldn't be doing that. I I do feel like breath work. If I got into the practice of doing breath work on a more regular basis, that is a very um an an active meditation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the odds of me falling asleep are very slim, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have a lot of yawning, which happens a lot of the time, you know, but okay. there's different modalities you can use. And I encourage everybody to try, you know, them all at least a few times, right? Meditation. Right. Yeah. First thing I would ask you is, you know, tell me about your sleep cycle. Tell me what's going on in your life. You know, or what's your cup? How full is that? Right? Where, how, where are you sitting? How are you setting the set and setting for yourself? You know, do you want to start with some active breathing and then drop into the meditation? Maybe it only needs to be five or 10 minutes as opposed to 20, 25, right? So maybe it needs to be more guided with the, someone's voice that is really has an energetic high vibe that is going to keep you engaged as right. opposed to just going with, okay, I'm going to sit there by myself and fall asleep. Right. So 
there's all different ways you can you can get into this. But but the fact of the matter is you carving out that time for yourself. Um, that's the most important thing. That's a huge act of self-love, right? And again, like I said, with breath work, it's a practice. So it's like, what do you need? Maybe there's a loud mantra or a noise you can make within your body, right? Some people go, well, I think too much. Well, yeah, you, of course you have 70,000 thoughts a day, but the beautiful thing is, right? Every time you catch a thought and you bring yourself back to the senses in your present moment, that's you winning. That's a check mark for you right? You get a little extra, like, congratulations, you just caught yourself. That's strengthening that inner divine kind of wisdom that you have, that, that understanding of you. So the whole point of meditating is being present. So focus on the senses, visualizing the breath coming in, right? Feeling the belly, the chest fill up, allowing that energy that, that might come that chi or whatever it is to come and feel that go through you. Right. All of these things are allowing you to be in this exact present moment with yourself and, and, or hear a song or hear the breath or whatever, all of those things are going to allow you to be in that moment for yourself. And if you can just kind of go, okay, I'm going to come in here and do my best. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best. You that's, that's a win. And so it's just showing up for yourself consistently on a daily basis, which is the key. I appreciate those tips. Um, mm. Do you by any chance have, uh, is there like a basic breath exercise that you might be able to, um, you know, express briefly to some of our listeners? Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I like this one. I, I do this one. I was just doing this at the beach earlier um, yesterday, but just to start off, um, we can go just a, a brief nose breathing. And this isn't like the, the extreme breath work that we do or the holotropic breath work. But if you want to just come along, we'll just take one minute to kind of give you a little guide. It's really simple and it just brings us present. But I like to start my meditations with this sometimes is if you want to bring your, your thumb and your forefinger to your nose, right? And we'll start off by shutting our eyes and closing our right nostril, okay? With your thumb. And then inhaling through your left nostril, closing your left nostril with your forefinger and exhaling through your right nostril. And then inhaling through your right nostril, closing your right nostril with your thumb, letting go of your forefinger, exhaling through your left and inhaling through your left. And then exhaling through your right. And then inhaling through your right. And then exhaling through your left. And then one more round, inhaling through your left. Exhaling through your right. Inhaling through your right. And then exhaling through your left. And then light release. And just allowing your body just to kind of go through those motions and have like a specific thing to do is, um, is really just, it brings us in a little bit more instead of going, what should I be? Cause we were action. We need to be in action. And there's another one as well. We can do, it's called box breathing. And this is another Navy seal training. I don't know if you ever, they use this, but it's called the four by four it's box breathing. Okay. And essentially, Again, we can shut our eyes and I'll just go through two rounds of this real quick, but essentially it's just inhale for four seconds through your nose, two, three, four, hold for four seconds, two, three, four, exhale for four seconds, pause for four, two, three, four, inhale for four, two, pause for four, exhale for four, Pause for four and inhale for four. And we can just do that as long as we choose on your own little rhythm. That's another really good one. And essentially what those two things will allow us to do is whether you felt it or not, a little calmness come over you, your cortisol levels start to drop. 
right? Any stress hormones you might have in your body. And also your nervous system will begin to stabilize. And that's where I think, and, and the other thing is if you were in that fight or flight left brain type of mentality that a lot of people are in, in their lives, that survival brain. And if we had a, a actual scan, CT scan over your head, if you do that long enough, you're going to see the gray matter move from the left brain to the right brain. Again, the right brain is more of the, the, the compassion, the sage, the innovator, the um, uh, getting into to, to creativity, more creativity, all of those things is where most of us want to operate from. And studies show if we can operate from there, not only are you going to, you know, if you're in business, you're going to make 30% more, you're going to live 10 years longer, you're going to be exponentially happier. And that's the whole point of doing this work is to come from that state of your brain, right? As opposed to living, which most people do in their left brain, where that is judgment, survival, anxiety, anger, fear, blah, blah, controller, all that other stuff that that we were taught as kids, you know, how to, how to live. So how so. is it that this breath work can actually get you to function more from the other hemisphere of your brain? And, and I guess the other question is, um, you know, we had two different exercises. Does each type of breath work, does it kind of access a different part of the brain? Does it have different functionality? You know what? Well, those breath works are just, just simple little practices you could do. When we do actual, when I teach actual holotropic breath work, it goes like this. It's the breathing goes like this. It goes. And you're doing that for about 25, 30, 40 minutes at some point. So you're breathing wow. into your belly, into your heart and exhaling all through the month. Right? So that's the intensity of the breath coming from that. Now, at first, you're going to find resistance come up. You're going to find uh, uh, a little bit of maybe lightheadedness, all this other stuff as your body ad adjusts to that intense type of breathing. So again, like you, for you, you said the subtleness, you might fall asleep or whatever. So those things might work at a certain time. But that active holotropic breath work that I just showed you is the real intense stuff that, that really allows us to, to get deep, deep, deep into the soul. Some people can reach it. It just depends where you are in life. You know, it just really depends. You know, what, what is calling to you is, is the answer to this. So, oh. hmm. well, this has been fantastic. Is, is there anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, started to wrap, wrap this up? No, I'm just, you know, it's just been a great to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to have people finally say, it's, it's about putting the oxygen mask on first, right? And, and knowing that as long as you take care of yourself and your cup is at a nine or 10, that's our job, you know? And I, I know a lot of people's belief systems are, and they'll fight me to the death on this is, well, I got to take care of my family and I got to take care of, you know, my loved ones and I got to make this much money. And, and, and yes, you do. And I'm not arguing with that. But all I'm saying is, when you carve the time out to work on yourself and you make that time, right, you're going to be a better version of you. You're going to make better decisions. You're going to come from a more joyful place, right? As opposed to feeling resentment or have to or victim like states, you get to come from a more ownership like place. And that's the goal is to really step into your power, step into owning get more creative so that you can come from the outside a position that has been taught to you so that you can follow your path and really, really impact people in a, in a way that you were meant to impact people, not from a way that was taught to you or ingrained in you in old patterning, but from a new way. And stepping into those new habits, there's resistance that shows up, but I want everybody to move towards what they want in life and not make decisions based on what they don't want in life. And if we can focus on that and put the goals on top of that mountain and fall in love with the journey. I think we're going to, we're going to be okay. 